Hi, it's Wayne from howtofish.com.au and I'm fishing the Hopkins River in Warrnambool on an absolutely beautiful morning. The breeze might come up later but it's absolutely perfect now and as you can see the sun is just starting to rise, just coming above the horizon. Beautiful conditions to be fishing in and I'm hoping to get some brim today, that's my target. The Hopkins River is known for its brim. It should be fun. I'm fishing uh, right on the uh, launching platform for the rowing club here at Warrnambool. Perfect <laughs> platform if they're not rowing um, for you know, sitting on and getting your bait out. Uh, I'm using today standard White Heart Burley as my attractant. I'm using my survival pack which is just simply a, a pre-stretched trace tied to my main line with the size 14 hook. I'm using my spicy chicken today. So the spicy chicken formula that I have been working for some time, I have improved. It has been working fantastically with the, all of the types of fish in these waterways. Uh, and the burley of course is there to attract those fish. Now one of the things I'm doing when I mix up my burley and uh, when I'm casting out is I'll put a little bit of my blood and guts pellets into the burley cage itself. So I just have the burley cage here, I push some burley in with my thumb, push some in with my thumb and then push some of the pellets in, those pellets there, so that I have a little bit of feed. Now, what I'm not doing is I'm not mixing them thoroughly throughout all of the burley. I just want a small package of pellets in my cage, in my burley cage. And that's giving a little bit of food. I don't want to mix it completely into my, my burley at this point. I want to see how much food that I want to put in there, how much they want to take. And then what I want to do is I want to stop putting that in once I feel that the fish are feeding and they're in the area and then the only piece of food around is going to be my bait. So I'll do this until I feel that the, feed, that the fish are feeding uh, and once they're feeding then I stop doing that. Okay. Into the first one of the morning. They fight so well, even the small ones. And there we go. Well, into the next one. They're taking fairly quickly now. And uh, I've got the, the burley working, all in the same spot though, the accurate castings make it. When I don't cast accurately, I'm not getting bites. I've got to hit that same spot and build up the burley. Not a big one. But a nice little brim nonetheless. So the rig I'm using is a, a running burley cage. This is a 40 gram burley cage. Uh, the water's fairly still here. There's no breeze. I don't need anything too heavy. So just 40 grams down to a line stop, down to tied on a pre-stretched trace. So this is a lightweight trace and then down to a very small hook. And that's all I've been using to catch these brim. That works very well. The other thing I've done with my hook, and I found that this does actually really help to give a better hook hold, I've been pushing, I've been using a pair of pliers and I've been pushing the barb in. So it's virtually a barbless hook and that seems to go in better. And these fish are hooking themselves. I'm just holding the rod there and they're hooking themselves. I'm not even actually having to strike into them. They're doing all the work. And it does seem that these hooks like this give a better hook hold and go in easier. And he wants to go for a run here. Uh, there's poles 
up over there. There's quite a few snags around in parts of this water, so you've got to be a bit careful. Not as big as I thought you'd be. There we go. Another one. Not a bad fish. Yes. They're coming thick and fast. This is not a big one. Straight after the cast. If I hit the same spot, really they come straight away. I'm not using a big bait. I mean, the, the burley is doing all the work to attract the fish to that target zone. And they, the only piece of food they're finding now, so I'll stop putting the pellets in, that's just the burley. The only piece of food they find is this little bait and they take it. Well, I just landed this one so quickly, I didn't really have a time to, to film it. Uh, not as big as the others, um, but certainly hitting the target zone is really making the difference. On this light rod, it feels really good. Like <laughs> the fish feel much bigger than they are just simply because I'm using such a light rod. It's really good fun. Right into the sun. Another nice one. Cast this out to my target spot. Okay. I just wait for it to uh, to feel the tension come off, which means it's hit bottom. And I don't tighten up before I do that. Okay, that's hit bottom. So I'm probably getting a fish within about a minute of casting in. Let's show you what I'm doing over here. It's going to my side. There are some snags around I've got to be careful of. Whoa. Can we go under? Nearly went under this uh, this ramp. Yeah, it's like he might have foul hooked himself. Let's just see. Oh no, no, certainly in the mouth. Another good, <laughs> another good brim. Now I often don't measure my fish, but <laughs> I've made sure that I, I bought my ruler today and uh, that fish was 28 centimeters. In fact, I'm finding that um, most of the fish I'm catching here are around about 28, 29, occasionally some a bit smaller, but certainly 
all about size, which is fantastic. In this video, just this snippet just here, I wanted to show how quickly you can get bites if you do everything right. So I'm using the light line and the small trace, so it's making the bait look natural. I've got a small hook, of course, with a small piece of bait on there, but that doesn't matter because I'm using burley to attract the fish into the area. The actual bait itself has been dipped in my spicy chicken formula, so it doesn't take long at all to actually get those fish in the area, mainly because I've been casting accurately and they're already there or already swimming around. So within the space of really only a couple of seconds after the bait hits the bottom, you're getting the response, you're getting the fish to pick that up. Didn't take long at all, and this is another brim that I just bought in. If you do this properly, a lot of these will be small, but eventually you'll get some big ones coming in that are interested in all the action. And that's the result. And you can get plenty of fish that way. So I've just tied on another hook. And now that I've done that, all I do is I use my trusty old pliers that I've had them so long they predate the invention of the automobile. And I'll just, oops, just get that and just push that, push that barb down. So I like to check that there's virtually nothing there. Perfect. So now it's got smooth entry into the mouth. I just take a mouthful of food out of my breakfast and um, you get a bite. Just when it's awkward in catching a fish, you'll get a fish. Okay, another good fish. Well, I've run out of burley, so I'm gonna to have to leave, unfortunately. Fishing was fantastic this morning, and uh, as you can see, just the combination of the right things. You've gotta find fish first off. I mean, if you can't locate fish, you won't be able to catch them. Um, in, when you come to an area where, you, and you're not sure about that, try and get some advice from the locals. And if you can't get advice on that, and you can't read fishing reports, then at least using the, the burley is going to try and bring those fish to you. So, you know, just imagine small bait, if that's all you're using, even if it's a very good bait, it can take quite a while for the fish to locate it. But if you're using a good bait, and you're using burley, which actually sifts out into the water and provides those bait signatures that float around in the water and attract the fish, then you'll bring them to you and you've got a much, much better chance of catching some fish. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And for information on the gear that I'm using on the burley, the baits, the techniques I'm using, go to my website, howtofish.com.au. See you next time.